Guys, want to take this conversation in a little different direction. Several years ago, Brett Gardner was one of those prospects who came to fruition. They got their other guy at the top of the lineup free of via free agency, Jacoby Ellsbury. And it's a dynamic one-two, Jack, but not all the time. And we saw Gardner fade, Ellsbury get dinged up. Is that a plan they should stick with? That is absolutely a plan that they should stick with. And here's why, Bob. I, I dug up some numbers before this show. And if you go until the end of July, both Ellsbury and Gardner had numbers between average on base percentage and slugging that you would be happy with and you would expect from them. But you go to August and you go to September and both of these guys plummeted. Why did that happen? Well, it's up to the Yankees to find that out. Talking to some Yankee people about both of these players, they said when they quizzed Ellsbury and Gardner, they didn't give any reason that they thought they should have fallen off the map. Did they have some injuries that slowed them down? Absolutely. But to fall off the map the way both of them did, that can't happen again. These guys are paid to be the catalyst at the top of the lineup, as you talked about. If they did it for four months, to me, they can come back and do it for a whole year. But is it the injury thing? Is it the fact that you need to tell them, Kenny, maybe you need to play the game a little differently because you're running into walls and you're costing yourself playing time? I don't know about you need know, to play the game any differently, Bob. I just heard Brian Cashman earlier on Michael Kay's show, and, and Cashman said, look, Brett Gardner needs to tell us when we uh, when he needs a day off. Or Joe Girardi and his coaching staff and the trainers need to read, you know, read the signals from Gardner and say you're getting a day off. But I think that's the main problem with Gardner. I think with Ellsbury, we don't know. I mean, your one was an A minus B plus with the Yankees. Your two was a D. So let's see uh, if he can rebound now. Yeah, well, I think Gardner, there's no question Gardner was hurt. I mean, we can pretty much chalk off his second half because of the fact he was hurt and didn't tell anybody. Uh, with Ellsbury, though, uh, Ellsbury doesn't steal bases anymore. And this is what they signed this guy for. And uh, he's not the player that they gave all this money to. And he better start being that player. And you don't know whether he will or not because he's getting up there in years now. So... You know, it's a it's a real problem for them. Yeah, you're asking him to bounce back to that A minus B plus guy. Right. It was a really risky deal for the beginning. I mean, because we had just seen what happened with Carl Crawford, a very similar player using their legs. As you get older, do, do those skills diminish? It seems like they do. And this is a really tough contract to have to absorb for the next five years. Now, I'm not saying he, he's done. Certainly, you know, the Yankees scored a lot of runs in the first inning last year. In fact, I think they might have been first in baseball in that. So, you know, it is a dynamic combination there at the top of the order. Um, but you're asking Ellsbury to do something now in 2016 that he was better doing, um, you know, five years ago. And that skill's probably not going to get better the rest of this massive contract. And we're talking about trying to keep these guys on the field and not get hurt. And you talked about running into walls, which is obviously more Gardner than Ellsbury. But yet they do need to run. As Bill said, that's part of who they are. And even though they have some more years on them, this is what makes these guys dynamic. What I think the Yankees should do sometime is have some of their pitchers talk to their base stealers. When pitchers get guys on base that get inside their head, it changes everything about them. I don't realize, I don't know if Gardner and Ellsbury realize how much they can affect a game by just running a little more often. And they totally forgot about that last year. So they don't need to play the physical game necessarily. It might not be as fast, but they can play the mental game and maybe give themselves an edge. Look at Ellsbury's <laughs> stolen base percentage for his career. The, the guy is as successful as anybody who's ever done it. I can't imagine that that skill just disappeared. He, he's got to get back to it, and Gardner has to be more aggressive. I mean, Gardner is a very good base stealer who lacks aggressiveness, which I've never really understood.